Hey guys, so solar eclipse day, we're all still here. Lots of things are going on in Iceland with the volcanic eruption there. There's the wind is changing and guess where it's blowing the air pollution. We'll talk about that and I just give you a hint. My friend, the Blue Lagoon. And speaking of the Blue Lagoon, there seem to be some suicidal tourists who took advantage of the possibility of parking at the Blue Lagoon and guess what they did. We will talk about this also because this is absolutely crazy. And then we're talking about what the Icelandic Meteorological Office has released today about what is going on in this one crater that is still active. So lots of things to cover guys, stay tuned, it's absolutely interesting and if you like this video it would be awesome if you could give it a like guys to push this a little bit in the algorithm. If you're new here, subscribe, it's worth it, I promise, thank you so much and let's dive right in. So what has happened? There is one crater still going and it has been impressive today. I watched it on the live cams. We've got this huge crater forming full of lava and then it looked like that some of the edges did give way and then there was like a river, like a waterfall of lava flowing down from there. So it seems it was the northern rim of the crater that broke and really created an impressive lava river and it looked like the eruption would like be stronger than ever before. It continues. There is no signs of slowing down. So that is for sure that one crater has taken over the duty to let this thing erupt. The land underneath Swartzangi, where the Swartzangi power plant and the Blue Lagoon are located, is rising again. So it's not flatlining, it's rising again. So there is magma accumulating again underneath Swartzangi in that magma chamber while all that lava is flowing out. It's still accumulating there again. Um, what about the gas pollution? We'll talk about this in a minute. What's the forecast? So for now, for like what has passed today, little gas pollution has been observed over the weekend, but temporarily high levels of sulfur dioxide can still be observed around the volcanic eruption and in settlements on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So this can blow quite far on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And there advise people in the area to monitor the air quality. And uh, also the forecast for Tuesday is a northeasterly direction and the gas pollution will therefore reach the southwest. And what's in the southwest? The southwest West, that's Swartzengi area, Blue Lagoon, Grindavik. And then the day later, an easterly direction. And then you can expect gas pollution west of the eruption craters again. So west, Blue Lagoon, Grindavik. So gas distribution forecast, they have a system where they say, look this up here. And there you can see for Tuesday where the gas will blow. So how I see this, there is a risk for the Blue Lagoon and there is a risk for Grindavik. And Blue Lagoon, we know it has opened again, despite the eruption still going on, despite the risk of gas pollution, despite the fact that one of the workers that was working on the Blue Lagoon area had to be hospitalized, I think about two weeks ago, don't count me on the days, um, because of severe respiratory issues. Oh, they're saying now they have more gas meters there, but you know, if you detect it in the area of the Blue Lagoon, it's already there and it's a problem. And uh, we'll talk about what the tourists are doing that are entering the Blue Lagoon because it's open again. People are allowed to enter this area again. And it seems that there is nobody who's controlling where these people are going. There's nobody that controls that they go in their car, park at the Blue Lagoon, go into the Blue Lagoon, get into their car and leave the area. Because the civil defense and the police chief of Sudurns has said, this is not a tourist er eruption yet. They're thinking about it, but it's not yet because it is dangerous. There's a lot of cracks in the area and there's this gas pollution. So what has happened again? In a minute, there's so much. I want to give this some structure, guys. I'm not trying to keep you long from this information, but you know, let's structure this a little bit. 
So you see these maps here. You see this is the map for the gas pollution at around noon. And then this is for 10 p.m. on Tuesday. So you see what's going on. So what will the Blue Lagoon do? Will they close down? Will they, Or will they wait for a last minute evacuation again? I mean, but tourists keep flocking. Maybe you've seen my video where the people are coming back. The parking lot was quite crowded the first day they reopened. And then there's people coming in wearing a cloth mask while they're outside walking do they think this is pro this is i don't know this will save them from the toxic sulfur gas no it won't you need a gas mask so walking with these cloth masks into the blue lagoon it's completely ridiculous and you know would you risk your health your safety maybe even your life for a swim I certainly wouldn't, and I told you guys I'd rather sit in my horse's water trough having my usual coffee and just enjoy the scenery. And I've made this AI picture here, and you said in my last video you're having a laugh about this. So here it is again. That's me and my critters. We're enjoying a, a, a bath together, so to speak. So... I think it's stupid and uh, what is going on you know now that this rim broke it's really massive again and it's it's also the lava bed is degassing causing bad bad gases so some tourists about nine tourists some people saw it on the live cameras and i think they reported it that's the story that i heard and they made a screenshot of it showing nine people stand at the crater really it looks like they're very very close and how did they get there from the parking lot off the blue lagoon it seems that they walked to the eruption site so how is this possible the police chief of sodorans has just said in an interview just recently they don't have the personal to supervise all of this he said well thankfully so far it hasn't been a problem that tourists have taken advantage of going from the Blue Lagoon to that eruption site. But that tells you how close the Blue Lagoon is to this eruption. The Blue Lagoon also tries to play it down a little bit, behaving like, well, yeah, it's right. It's not so close. Well, it is. The magma chamber is right underneath it. And then there's this eruption. You can feel the heat from this eruption. Um, people have reported this when they had to do uh, this emergency evacuation from the Blue Lagoon. They said they felt the heat in their car. Crazy absolutely crazy and you think how stupid do these people have to be to do that to risk the lives of rescue people of police people I mean seriously and this happens again and again in Iceland and that's not the fault of Iceland that's the pure stupidity of these people because the hikes to these eruption sites it's not that there's a nice gravel trail or a paved road this is lava rocks everywhere and uh, this is difficult terrain and it's winter it's getting cold it can rain it can snow it can freeze and then these people are exhausted by going there sometimes it's like a four to five hour hike to even get to these remote eruption sites and then they're exhausted and then they need to go back and then they don't have gas masks with them if there's the sulfur gas happening. So this is crazy, absolutely crazy. What do these people think? And it's really, it makes me angry, but also it shows, should that blue lagoon be open? And you know my opinion, guys, it should not. Because sometimes, and I'm all about like, not having too many restrictions and having a free life and having freedom and not have ridiculous bureaucracy limit your day-to-day -day life. But you know, sometimes you have to protect stupid people from themselves. And a spa is not a life necessary thing that would restrict you in your freedom or anything. Just close that thing down and don't let people into this area, period. There's absolutely no reason why people need to drive down Grindavik or Vigo. That's the access road to Grindavik. Grindavik is closed for everyone except residents, businesses, and press. Or like contractors. So nobody else has business in the town or needs to go down that road. And the least tourists. So sometimes, really, people are so stupid absolutely stupid and then if something happens it falls back on everyone in that area and they are worried about their tourism industries it's absolutely insane 
So the eruption at this Sugnuta crater series continues and the lava flow from the crater flowed yesterday in a southern direction in a rather limited stream, but which then has developed into quite an impressive lava river. And then at the same time, the magma surface in the crater gradually rose until it was almost full. And then the northern rim of the crater broke at around 9.30 p.m. last night. And then the magma started flowing in the northern direction like a waterfall. And imagining these people standing so close to the crater and the rim breaks, and then that lava keeps flowing towards them. It's a very fast flowing lava. And you know, it's if it builds up pressure and the rim breaks, it's fast and then these idiots are standing there looking at it, right? So today, after that rim broke, it, it could be observed that the lava changed direction again from flowing to the north. Of course, it was flowing north because the northern rim broke, but it changed back to flowing south again today. But the speed of the lava that we did see last night when it was flowing to the north is not the same today when it's flowing to the south. So, um, Right now, the crater rim is charging up again. How can we measure lava flows or gather more data about these lava flows? And the Icelandic Metrological Office has released a graph. And to explain that graph to you, what that means, we, we got to take a few minutes just to go through this, but it's very interesting. So they are basically measuring detectable turbulence and they're measuring this in hertz. So the green frequency on the graph is the measurements of one to two hertz. And when the lava flow from the crater is at its greatest, the turbulence increases as well. And after the rim of the crater gave way, you can see that the turbulence subsides again, roughly if you there on April 8th, you can see that it's going down. And comparable turbulence activity was also seen in volcanic eruptions when it was in the other Geldinga Valley where turbulence increased as the lava flow increased. And uh, I want to go a little deeper into that graph so that you really understand what this means. So this is a graph that shows velocity measurements in millimeters per second over a period from April 6th to April 8th. And the velocity is a measure of ground vibrations or tremors. That's what velocity means in this case. And they are these tremors or ground vibrations are likely related to seismic activity that is caused by magma flowing underground or an eruption. So the graph is color coded here and it has three frequency ranges. Red is 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 hertz. Green, as we just said, is one to two hertz and blue is two to four hertz. So the graph displays overall the fluctuations in velocity for these frequencies over time in this eruption, as we just said, from April 6th to April 8th. And according to what the Met Office says, the tremor or the, that ground vibration increases when the lava flow from the crater is the greatest. And so if you look at that graph, you can see spikes in the velocity and especially it was noticeable in the green frequency band, the one to two hertz frequency band. And that corresponds to the lava flow that we had seen after the rim broke. Um, so additionally, um, the tremor drops after the crater rim gives way. And uh, so you might observe that as a decrease in the velocity readings on that graph. And you see the curve of that graph, that green graph going straight down. And what's the reason for these measurements? These measurements help volcanologists and seismologists to understand and monitor this ongoing volcanic activity and to determine whether this eruption is dying down. Is it slowing down? Is it not slowing down? So a little bit more information for you guys 
that that helps you to understand these graphs that the Icelandic Meteorological Office puts out because they throw them out on their website, they give a short explanation and then they leave you to it. So I hope that helps. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the gas distribution forecast, because um, if you look at their website that they recommend for people and the Blue Lagoon has that on their website now too, and they say, well, for more information, just go there and inform yourself. So, okay, we go there, we inform ourselves. So what they're saying is, an important mes message about gas pollution for those danger zones due to earthquakes. And if you click on that links, that's the hazard map of the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And the Blue Lagoon is inside that orange area, inside that hazard map. And they're saying gas pollution can always exceed, exceed dangerous levels in the vicinity of the eruption. Also, what they're saying, what I think is really, it's really important in light winds. So don't think that, oh, there's no wind that it won't blow this to the Blue Lagoon while I'm taking my swim there and having my facial mask. Um, in light wings, uh, wings, yeah, in light winds, the distribution of gas contamination can be unpredictable, unpredictable. You really have to get these words in your head as heat from the lava bed affects wind direction in the area. So that means it can come unexpected while you're swimming in that pool. Gas contamination is also transmitted from the lava bed due to degassing and the lava bed is quite close to the Swartzengi area. It actually did flow right there. If symptoms appear, it is important to get away from the situation. Yeah, we understand that. And why am I saying that? Because they're saying this again, the danger zones and look at that hazard map. And then because people, I want to get into that topic again, because you keep talking in the comments. Well, if something happens in the Blue Lagoon, some tourists die or get injured, well, they will sue the Blue Lagoon and um, will their travel insurances pay? Well, you have to listen what's on a public announcement of the civil defense and the police chief of Sodorns. And he says, if you're in the areas, the danger zones you are on your own at your own risk and you are yourself responsible for your actions and in actions so they're basically giving you the the disclaimer here you're it's your fault we're not responsible we said that this is a hazard area and they say that the Blue Lagoon and the Grindavik are at risk from lava flow and toxic gas pollution and again how do you interpret this if something happens? Can you sue the Blue Lagoon when the civil defense, because the Blue Lagoon says, well, for further information, check out the website of the civil defense and they're listing some other websites as well. And if the website of the civil defense and the police chief of Sudan states you're at your own risk, you are responsible for your actions and inactions, can you sue them? That's the question. But, you know, there might be a little loophole. I'm not a lawyer, so if you're a lawyer, tell me. Is there a loophole? Because, you know, can you really be aware going to the Blue Lagoon if they don't make you sign a waiver? I know it's different in the US. You basically sign a waiver for everything. In Europe, this is not really too common that you sign these waivers. So, but shouldn't the Blue Lagoon really let guests know at the entrance, here guys, if you die of gas pollution, it's your own fault. We're not responsible because it's on the website of the F Civil Defense and we have a link on our website. But shouldn't the Blue Lagoon website say, read this before you come here and be aware because they're asking a lot from those tourists. So not only have to click to the civil defense website, you have to know what the hazard areas are. And the Blue Lagoon kind of like behaves, they're not really in the super dangerous hazard area. So then they have to click and find the hazard map. Then they have to find the location and oh, so it's confusing. I think this is not really, really, really declare it the way it should be. And I think this might be the loophole that people really could go after them and sue them if something happens. I'm surprised, I, in my opinion, if that was in the US, 
and people had to go through these emergency evacuation and that one video of the woman who filmed this, filmed this with her cell phone, she was so scared. I think they would have sued the Blue Lagoon already if that was in, in the US and sued for PTSD and damages and emotional distress and yada, yada, yada. Um, let me know what you think. I think this is quite likely that this would have happened. But in Europe, it's... Uh, in Europe, people don't have their lawyer on standby waiting to sue somebody. Um, that, that's not the case. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting scenario. So guys, if you know more than me about this, uh, let's discuss this as always. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, um, what, what's definite, these nine people, eight or nine people that went to the crater, um, definitely they're at their own risk and they're completely responsible for their own actions, right? Um, but who let them in? Why were they there, right? They kind of tricked everyone by being on the parking lot of the Blue Lagoon. So, police chief says we don't have enough personnel to supervise the area fully. So, if you don't have enough personnel to do that, then don't let the people in. That's my closing sentence, guys. I leave you at that. It's rumbling at Campi Fligli in Italy again. There is a massive steam coming out, way more than usual. Another earthquake swarm of 100 earthquakes, a lot of magnitude 2 and higher, 3.2, the highest in the in the sea in front of Pozzuoli, if there's some crack and something mixes with the water, some magma mixes with the water, this can be explosive, guys. So something's happening there. And it's not a question of if, it's just a matter of when. And certainly the activity has increased there compared to last month. And that's a volcano with 3 million people and more than 3 million people that will need to be evacuated. And that volcano is way more dangerous than these fissure eruptions that we see in Iceland. Th those are not, I mean, the lava flow, the gas, but they're not explosive, right? Not the ones that we're seeing right now. So check out that video. I'll put it in the end screen, especially if you live in Europe, because if this thing blows, it'll affect the whole world. Food production, climate, it can create a mini ice age. It has done so in the past. Um, if it really erupts fully, it's massive, massive, massive. Experts are saying food will only um, be enough for 74 days because if there's no sun, if there's everything covered, you can't grow, right? And these ash clouds, they, they can go very, very far. In 2010, one volcano erupted in Iceland and disrupted air travel to North America and in, to many, many other areas. So guys, the world is rumbling and I'm here on the pulse and I hope you stay with me. If you're new here, I would love it for you to subscribe. And for all of my other viewers, you are just amazing. Thank you so much for supporting my farm on my Buy Me A Coffee website and here with the supers. I really appreciate your help. And uh, thanks so much for that. I'm a little late with my video today because there's been so much going on on the farm today and uh, it was a busy day and then of course Murphy's Law my mares broke through my fence that I newly built with four lines of electric fence with two different chargers so I had different fence lines with a different charger so that I have no failure but I have this little one paint mare and she ran through and all the others followed. And then you know how it is with electric wire polytape. They get stuck in it with their hind legs and then they're running and then they're tearing the whole fence down. So they tore down 300 meters of fence line. And you know, thankfully I had the area double fence so that they couldn't run off because I had to leave the farm gate open today because there were a lot of people driving in and out today and of course this happens and then the weather was bad and it was raining and it was just a mess today um I'm soaking wet I, I don't show you my jeans because almost to the near the, they're wet and full of mud but I thought I'd just come in here and I have to I have to bring the news out to you before I clean up so thanks for watching guys I'll be back soon I promise and check out the videos in the end screens I'm out of here bye bye